So, you want to play Rogue Lords, do you? Well, you've conquered some measly towers and even some dark dungeons. But can you perform the ultimate feat and restore the devil himself? In Rogue Lords, you are the devil, defeated by a group of demon hunters led by Van Helsing themselves. Your job, your mission, your destiny is to reclaim your dominion over the world. However, it won't be easy. In your way lies Van Helsing, with all the artifacts of power previously yours. Can you retrieve them and usurp the Holy Sanctua Lumen Order before being eliminated for good? When first entering the game, you have access to three options. The Chart of Disciples, where you can see the starting skills and stats for your minions, as well as their origin stories. The Altar of Conquests reveals the routes to unlocking more power and abilities. Whether these be by completing certain achievements or simply by leveling, obtaining the permanent upgrades you desire can be planned for. There is also a statistics page for the real nerds amongst us. Just look at how much damage I did in one turn! I know, I know, I'm, I'm amazing. Finally, the map is where the real adventures begin. The disciple chosen as leader will be your representative on the adventure map, so it's obviously going to be the wonderful waifu Mary. During a run, your mission is to progress along the map and seek out the enemy boss at its end, bringing them down before your diabolic essence is fully depleted. Diabolic essence is unwillingly taken when you receive vulnerable damage in combat, however it can be willingly used as a resource in times of need, as I'll show you later. Adjacent to the essence is your terror rating bar, and below your soul count. Every four pips will increase your terror level among the populace. With each new level you gain improved chances to accessing better skills and more relics as you progress. As you kill humans through the run you can absorb souls. With these you can trade with the grim reaper at certain points on the map for either relics or skill upgrades. When starting, looking at the map lets you know what awaits you down the line, giving you the chance to plan which nodes you want to encounter. Each node on the map will be one of the following locations. Book chapters. Learn about the start or end of each chapter's narrative. Events. Influence story events with a chosen disciple in order to gain more power and beneficial traits. Styx fountains. Regenerate lost diabolic essence or remove negative traits. Sacrificial Altar Destroy one skill from a disciple to earn another of the same tier and unlock a new hotbar slot for that disciple. The Grim Reaper Spend your gathered souls to pick from three skills per disciple or a new relic or even upgrade a chosen skill. Combat Fight your way through Van Helsing's puppets for either an increase in terror a new skill or two, or just more souls. There are also elite combats, which are much harder, but give you a guaranteed relic reward. At each location there will sometimes be a blue optional objective that you can complete before or after the main objective. However, these are not necessary to proceed and if left behind cannot be accessed at a later date. When picking up new skills, these can be added to the appropriate disciple's hotbar of powers. If any of these skills have a flashing up arrow, then it will form a triple. A triple fuses three of the same skill into one improved skill, freeing up more of your slots on the hotbar and granting you a bonus skill of the same tier. If you have forgotten what traits, skills or relics each disciple has, Accessing the spellbook at any time will show you the current state of your disciples. Useful when deciding on what upgrades to claim. Finally, onto the carnage and your glorious blood-stained road to foul redemption. In combat, your three disciples will line up against a number of waves of enemy combatants. To kill your enemies, you must reduce either their health points or spiritual points to zero putting them in a vulnerable state and then hitting them with a final blow to finish them off. If your own disciples are put into this vulnerable state, they cannot be killed, but each additional hit to them 
will directly target your Diabolic Essence instead. Under each character are listed any buffs or debuffs they may be afflicted with. Hovering over these will reveal tooltips on what they do. Beginning the fight, you are to make the first move, but are able to see what actions the enemy is going to perform after your turn has ended, and if you hover over them, who they are targeting. Each turn you will have 5 action points to spread across all of your disciples skills. Once you have used an ability, it becomes disabled until it is later refreshed. Each disciple is capable of refreshing their abilities and sometimes that comes with an added bonus. Dracula gets to refresh everyone's abilities at once, whilst Bloody Mary can also relocate her cursed mirror onto a new target. Whomever Mary attacks, the cursed mirror repeats this skill against her cursed target for free. In this way, different characters excel at different things. For example, the Headless Horseman is a great tank, whilst Dracula gains double damage when in a vulnerable state. Finally, what truly makes this game unique in the presence of such tactical titans is the little pentagram next to the diabolic essence. Pressing this button lets the devil enter play. Entering devil mode whilst on the adventure map gives two abilities to create portals and reset optional locations. Portals allow you to sidestep dangerous locations if you've happened to have chosen the wrong route and any irksome optional location can be swapped with a random other one. When interacting with peasants at an event in devil mode, you can modify your chances of success by moving the slider for a more guaranteed social outcome. And in combat, the powers of your enemies will wilt in the face of your demonic might. Skills can be refreshed. Colored buffs and debuffs can be moved to different characters, however the grey modifiers are immovable, even for the devil. And health or spirit can be given or taken away. Note, it's more costly to give health or spirit when in a vulnerable state. And with those powers, nothing can get in your way of achieving total domination. Looks like you'll have to start again. <laughs> However, even if you have failed, you'll still receive your experience and can go for another run with a better understanding and more power. Or maybe you'll just decide Dracula isn't worth it. There's a fancy new character for you to try. Tee <laughs> In my opinion, I have been very pleasantly surprised with how tactically engaging and wonderfully designed Rogue Lords is for a game that I did not even have on my radar. As the astute of you will have figured out, anyone who enjoyed Darkest Dungeon and Slay the Spire and games like them will find a home here. I have not managed to get very far within the game yet, but I am certainly going to. There are plenty of unlocks to progress through, and I just can't leave my beautiful Mary on her own. Thank you for watching, and now it's time to race you to hell and back! Let me know when you've completed the game, and I'll see you in another tutorial.